In today's video, we will be going over quite a few important things. The most important being creating a relationship between two SharePoint lists and Power Apps. In our feedback app, we will be adding a comments SharePoint list. We will add it to a new screen inside our Canvas app and connect that to our feedback item so that the second screen only displays comments related to the feedback item selected. I'll also go over how to navigate to that second screen, how to only display the feedback item detail selected, how to create the functionality for a back button, and how to create a patch functionality to post a new comment. Join me in this journey and let's get started. All right, so we're gonna get started with building a, another screen in our Canvas app and another list in our SharePoint site. So if you don't recognize this screen that we have up here, please go back to my previous videos and see how we got to the, this screen and how we added this form and this view. The first thing we're gonna do is add a new screen. We're just gonna add a blank screen. So we're gonna click new screen, blank screen, and we're going to go ahead and add a comments list. So we'll go to add, We'll go to layout, vertical gallery. Uh, we won't connect to the feedback list because we're gonna actually go into our uh, SharePoint site and add another list. So navigate to your SharePoint site. All you have to do is click this hamburger bun and that will take you to all of your apps. And from there, you'll be able to click SharePoint. That'll take you to your SharePoint site. And once you're in your SharePoint site, you'll be able to see this tools at the top right hand corner. You'll click on the tools site contents. You'll see your feedback list here in your SharePoint site, but we're actually going to create a new SharePoint list for comments. That way we can create a relationship between the feedback list and the comments list so that all the comments lists, all the comments live in one list and all the feedback items live in another one. So we're going to hit new list, blank list, and we're going to name this comments. We'll leave the des uh, description blank and hit create. So from here, we're going to add a hidden column for ID and we're going to hit apply. We're going to add a column and we're going to make this an integer. This is going to be the integer, the number that is going to be tied to our feedback list. So we'll go ahead and select number. We'll give this a comments ID. Just like that, leave that as a number and leave the rest as is. All right. Now we'll just add a uh, description column here. So I named the description comments instead and made it a multi-line text field. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and take out the required for this title as we're not going to need it. You can see this being done in my previous video, but if you wanna see it again, you can go here, you can go to the tools, go to list settings, go down to title, and then hit no for require and then okay. All right, so we have all the necessary fields here. So now we'll go back to our Power App and we'll actually want to go ahead and save and then reopen the app so that we can see the new list and be able to bring in that new list into our Power App. So once you're back into your Power App after you've saved, published, and exited, refreshed, and come back, you will go back to the screen that you created previously. You will open up the carrot. You will click on the gallery. And now when you go into SharePoint and look for your new site. So I'm going to take the URL from the SharePoint site that we created here. And I'm going to connect that and now you will see the comments list. So you'll check that off and click connect. And this will be blank because we don't have any data, but now we're actually going to go ahead and update this items formula bar here to display the comments that are going to be connected to our feedback app. So for example, when a user is 
in the initial screen of the feedback gap and they click on this first column data test, we are going to navigate them to the second screen here and we're going to ensure that this gallery only displays comments for that specific item they selected. So before we even get to connecting the SharePoint list, we want to ensure that when a user clicks on one of the items from the gallery list, it actually takes them to the second screen and only displays that selected item. So we'll go into screen two and we'll want to add a view only a form. So we'll add a form, bring this to the top, adjust it a little bit, connect to data, we want to connect to the feedback list. So we'll click on feedback list and we'll make sure that this is a view only. So in the default mode, we'll click view and then, and then we'll go into advanced and in this item we'll actually want to take the name of the first gallery. So we'll say gallery one and then period selected. And as you can see here, it's already populated and we actually want to take out that title because we don't need that. And then we'll only get the data that we selected from the previous screen. All right, now we need a way to add comments to the second screen. So we'll go ahead and add another form here, but this time we'll make it an editable form. And this we will connect to comments. So just like this. And then when we go connect, we'll do comments and we will remove title comment ID. We'll use the comment ID in the formula bar in a second, but we'll just want to keep formula or er, comments. We will make this editable and we'll change this to one column so that it stretches and then we'll click inside of here and we can actually just click out here, widen the width this way so that they have a little bit more space to type in their comments. And then we'll want to add a button to be able to submit this. So insert add button. Just like that. All right, so now is where the fun begins. So we'll select the button, make sure that you're inside on select in the drop down, and we will start the patch. So we will say patch connect that to the comments SharePoint list, open curly brace. We'll connect that to the comments ID and then we'll connect it to the first gallery list. So gallery one selected and then this is the ID from the, sh from the feedback list. And then we'll say, we're going to tie that comments to the, this input value here so what is this data card is data card value 10 for the inside of the form. So when the user submits the form, we're going to take the value from this comments input and we're going to add it to our list at the bottom. So comment data card value 10, and we're going to take the text from that and then closing curly brace and then closing parentheses. Okay. So now we want to connect to the gallery. So we'll go back here, we'll select gallery and we're going to add this formula to the items drop down. So filter, connect to the comments SharePoint list, add the comments ID and make that equal to the selected gallery list item and then connect that to the, the feedback ID here. All right, so before we go and play this, we actually need to add the functionality so that when 
a selected item is clicked, we want to navigate to the second screen. So bring out your tree view, select the gallery, change this to on select, type in navigate, screen two, and then we actually want to go back to that second screen and make sure that this is set to form is set to new and we want to add one more thing to this so that when this is clicked the form actually resets so we want to say reset form or new form semicolon new form and we want this form to reset so comments so we'll actually want to do reset form and we'll select this outer form here which is form 3 for me All right, let's see if it works. Go back to the first screen, click play. We're gonna select any of these. We're gonna start typing comments. Post that comment and we'll see that comment be populated here with that new comment. Then we can go back to our comments SharePoint list and see if anything has changed in here. So as you can see here, our new comment has been added here. These are just some tests that I've added. But a new comment has been added here with the comment ID 3, and that actually matches back to our feedback list here with the ID 3, demo data. That's the one that we clicked. So that is how you set up a successful relationship mapping between two SharePoint lists and Power Apps. So now let me show you how I added this back button that will allow us to go back to the previous screen. All I did was add an icon for the back button here, selected that, and then for the functionality of the back button, all I did was create this function back, and that is all you need to create that back button. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe or connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter to get updates when I post my next Power Apps video. Thanks for joining. Take care.